with all of the mayhem in the AI industry right now, after Sam Altman got fired from OpenAI as their CEO, there is blood in the water and the other AI competitors have seen it. There's just some crazy things happening right now. Specifically, I believe Anthropic's Claude model is about to see a major boost. This is really seen as the number two player after ChatGPT and it has seen a major boost. Today, they've just announced a massive slew of updates that I think are gonna make a really big impact on the industry and are gonna start pulling developers away Away from OpenAI, who seems to currently be floundering. I've seen the sentiment all over Twitter, all over X, everyone's saying, look, I'm building this, you know, these tools, I'm building all of these different um, things with, you know, the API coming out of OpenAI, but I don't know what's happening right now. We have Sam Altman who has left, and you know, of course you can recover from a lost CEO, theoretically, but we have 90%, over 90% of the employees at OpenAI saying they're going to quit if Sam Altman doesn't come back. It doesn't look like he's coming back. They've replaced him with a new CEO, and so um, I think that really a lot of these developers are saying, look, we don't know what's going on with OpenAI. They're saying, you know, there might be a ton of downtime. There, the product might be unstable. This was number, you know, this was the number one best AI tool, the best AI models out there. It was kind of best in class, but all of a sudden with the whole company in upheaval, people don't know where this is going long-term. And so Anthropics Claude is swooping in and announcing a ton of new updates, which I think are gonna see a massive boom. I wanna talk about first all of the updates, but also I wanna talk about some conflicts of interest, Some shady things that are also happening. So maybe I'll cover that first. So the first thing is the there was recently an article that broke that said um, just recently OpenAI approached Anthropic, who owns Claude, of course, and approached them about a merger. This is absolutely crazy. I think this is definitely not the right move at the time. But this is what's interesting. A lot of people are just thought like, oh, it was kind of like a crazy idea. Beyond that, their new interim CEO, who is Emmett Shear, he was the co-founder and CEO of Twitch. Then, uh, which was then acquired by Amazon, Amazon invested four billion dollars into Anthropic. So Amazon has a massive stake in Anthropic, and if the merger between Anthropic and OpenAI went through, theoretically his stock price would soar. So this, there's definitely some conflicts of interest there. He was also a paid advisor to Anthropic, and now he's over at OpenAI, which just does not feel um, like a very good solution. In addition, he's repeatedly tweeted about slowing down. Um, the rate of AI development by 90%. None of this looks like the kind of guy you want running your AI organization, in my opinion, when you're you know, seeing all of these struggles. But let's talk about, and so anyways, I think that this is, there's a lot of, um, a lot of cause for alarm, and it looks like Anthropic may be pulling off uh, a complete takeover. They might be surpassing OpenAI on a number of things. Let me tell you about some of their latest um, announcements and features that they just announced one hour ago. This is from their statement. They said, our new model, Claude 2.0, offers a industry-leading 200,000 token context window. So there's been kind of this context window battle between Anthropic and OpenAI. Anthropic had a bigger context window, meaning um, sometimes I would go to ChatGPT and I'd like paste in an article and be like, hey, just give me a summary of this article. And it's like, sorry, your prompt is too long. And I'd be like, ugh. So I'd go over to Claude uh, and paste it in and it would give me the summary because Claude could have longer context windows. Um, OpenAI didn't like that. In the recent dev day, Sam Altman announced, hey, we're opening up the context window. This is getting bigger. And they essentially made it so you could paste in like a lot larger uh, context windows. Claude, seeing they were getting beat again, has now once again increased their context window to 200,000 tokens. Now, what's a token, yada, yada. A couple other things they said is that uh, included in all of that, uh, it's re there's reduced uh, rates of model hallucination, um, system prompts, tool use, and they have some updated pricing to improve cost efficiency, yada, yada. But let's talk about specifically the context window, because honestly, this is the thing that I actually use Claude for the most. They said, you can now relay roughly 150,000 words or 500 pages of information to Claude. This means you can upload code bases, financial statements, or long literary works for Claude to summarize, perform you know, questions and answers on, you upload a ton of stuff, ask it questions about it. You can get it to forecast trends. You can compare and contrast multiple documents and more. And I've seen them in their demo, like literally grabbing a PDF file, throwing it in there, and it's able to look over all the stuff. Now, open, they've been they've been doing this for a little bit. OpenAI and their dev day also announced, you know, they're gonna be doing that. But now, they're, now they've opened up the context window and it's even bigger. So once again, Anthropic is the winner here. And I think that they smell blood in the water. They know that OpenAI is not going to be able to quickly pivot. They're in complete mayhem. They're just pushing all of these tools. And the reason why some people are like, well, were they capable of doing this before? 
probably this context window thing is probably not a, a new capability but what it is is incredibly freaking expensive to do this just costs a lot of money to upload a 500 page document and have it run through it but why are they doing it if this is the way that they can grab developers and they can take everyone that's building on OpenAI and move them over even if they lose money even if it's expensive anthropic is an incredibly well-funded company they can front run any losses at the moment in order to essentially get people on their infrastructure and start building and seize a moment when there's serious weakness um, in the eyes of developers for OpenAI. So the other thing they said is that Claude 2.1 has made significant gains in honesty with a two-time decrease in false statements compared to the regular Claude 2. So the model has demonstrated a 30% reduction in incorrect answers and a three to four times lower rate of mistakenly concluding a document supports a particular claim. So this enables companies, enterprises, um, serious players to build high performing applications that solve business problems with a lot more trust and reliability. Is it perfect? No. Is it a lot more trustworthy and reliable? Yes. And at this point, um, you know, some people I know will complain and say, well, we can't trust it 100%. I'm not going to use it. It's like, okay, that makes perfect sense. But for a large majority of people, the cost of getting an analyst to review 500 pages of documents very quickly to get some key takeaways and ask a few questions uh, would be so incredibly expensive throwing something in. Imagine like literally um, legislation uh, that's going through Congress. I know this is this sounds like a, a terrible use case because you want this to be 100% accurate and, and et cetera, et cetera. But oftentimes, as is the case in Congress, a bill is put forth. This thing's got 7,000 pages. No one knows what's in the bill, and they say we're we're voting on this, uh, you know, tomorrow morning. This happens frequently, especially with spending bills. This is a notorious problem the United States faces. So, what do a lot of these offices do? They have like a hundred aides that all take a section of it, read through it, write a summary, yada yada, bring it all to the senator to try to summarize it. Well, this is a solution. It's incredibly cost prohibitive. You need a ton of work. Only the best funded, and this is something people don't like to talk about. Only the best funded congressional appointees can afford all of those aids. It's, it's, it's just, so using a tool like this, and whether this is for, I think, you know, I'm not saying I think Congress people should use this, but let's say the bill's put forward and, and someone else wants to read it or look over it or review it, like you or I, there's no way that we are gonna hire 100 aides to read this thing for us. Throwing something like this into Claude, even if you throw it in pieces into Claude, and then asking it questions, getting the key takeaways and the summaries, and asking it for anything that seems out of the ordinary or any of conflicts of interest in there, you could immediately raise the alarm. Because part of the, the thing, and I'm not saying this is any particular party's issue, I'm sure it's kind of a right and left problem here in the United States, so this is a criticism against everyone, but these bills go forward and everyone's sneaking in their special interest uh, you know, items into there, hoping no one notices that the bill goes out, they vote on it the next day. There's no time for every, the public to scrutinize this thing and say, hey, X, Y, and Z is sketchy about it. These people are putting special interests. These lobbyists are putting things into it. And so being able to have tools like Claude really democratize not just, you know, uh, enterprise looking at financial documents, but in my opinion, government um, and uh, so many very, very impactful areas. So in any case, I think this is a very important uh, use case that, that they're bringing forward here. And the accuracy that they're, um, they're bringing, the increased accuracy, I think is very important and very relevant. So this is what else they said about this. Claude 2.1 includes a tool use feature that allows the model to integrate with users' existing process products and APIs. This is very interesting. This means that Claude can now orchestrate across developer defined functions or APIs, web search and private knowledge bases, right? So you can attach this to your private knowledge base at your corporation. You can attach this to web search. Um, this essentially Claude is getting a lot more powerful and it's getting to be able to do everything that ChatGPT and GPT-4 is essentially able to do. And of course, again, they're releasing all these products furiously, quickly um, so that they can start to essentially eat away at OpenAI's dominant market share. They said, we're enhancing our developer experience with a new workbench feature in the console. It makes it easier for Claude API users to test prompts. We've also introduced system prompts, which allow users to provide custom instructions to structure responses in a more consistent way. Again, this is exactly what OpenAI has done. So they're catching up to OpenAI on a ton of different things. And the problem we've seen a lot of times is like a model will catch up and then OpenAI will push forward and then they'll catch up and it'll push forward. Well, they're catching up and increasing the context window to, to essentially, uh, I think, bring in new users that, that are unable to do whatever their use case is on ChatGPT. So they're 
catching up and beating them in some regards and open AI is an upheaval. So I think this is a serious time where people are going to start looking at Anthropic a little bit differently. They're going to take it very seriously. The last thing that they said is that Claude 2.1 is available now in our API and is powering Claude.ai, that's their website, for both free and pro tiers. Usage of the 200,000 context window is reserved for Claude Pro users. You have to be a paying user. You can't be a free user in order to use this massive context window. That makes perfect sense because this thing's incredibly expensive. But what's crazy to me is a lot of times we've seen OpenAI, like when earlier this year they made all their big announcements around G, uh, you know, GPT-4. They made a lot of announcements and said, look, we we're going to be able to do all these cool things, but they didn't release the API for them for like months till just recently. And so uh, it was, you know, I mean, it's cool when they make a big announcement, but it's kind of frustrating when it's like, hey, here's this cool announcement, but you can't use it. You can't even test it. You don't have an API for it. Um, it, it was just kind of annoying. So what I love that Claude's doing here is they're saying, here's some crazy new features. Here's some amazing new stuff we're doing. We're launching the API. It's available now. Like go use this, go implement this immediately. Developers that are kind of sketched out about OpenAI right now can immediately start grabbing this and implementing this. I think this is a game changing move by Claude. I think they're trying to sync OpenAI. They're, they're trying to really catch up uh, in this competitive landscape. And this is the first big move I've seen. I'm going to be very curious to see if uh, projects like Google's Gemini try to expedite the launch, if projects coming out of Meta, if projects coming out of AWS and Amazon try to expedite to catch up in a similar way that Anthropics Cloud is going. I'll keep you updated, but this is absolutely wild and not looking good for OpenAI at a time when all of their internal politics and drama seems to be severely damaging, not maybe just the company's tech, but it's trust from its users and more specifically the developers implementing it into everything they see. I'll keep you updated. Make sure if you are interested in investing in a brand new AI startup, you go check out republic.com slash AI dash box. AI box is my new software platform. It's a no code AI app builder and marketplace that is model agnostic. The reason that I think this is so important with everything happening today OpenAI was winning, now it's got some upheaval. Looks like Anthropics Claude is coming in and coming up with all these new features. If you build a tool on AI Box, it's a no-code AI app builder, no matter what model you want, it's model agnostic, meaning you can build out your workflow, no code, and if all of a sudden OpenAI starts failing and Anthropics Claude comes up with a bunch of new features you want to use, you can go in and switch the model, switch from OpenAI to Claude, switch from Claude to something by Meta, switch to an open source project. It's model agnostic, meaning you can run your prompts, you can run your workflows using any different AI tools. We think this is incredibly important. We've got a handful of big players right now, but we believe the space is going to have thousands of players in the future, thousands of AI models that do very specific tasks, and we're building a platform where you can access all of that. So if you're interested in getting on the wait list, go to AIbox.ai. And if you're interested in investing in the project, we launched it three month, three weeks ago and have raised over $300,000. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's um, republic.com slash AIbox. I'll keep you updated on everything happening in the industry right now, but this is absolutely wild times for AI all around.